There is something that happens after I go and after you go. And even today, we have that mentality that there is no afterlife seeping into our mindsets. And why do we think it is that most people live life as if it's a race to the grave to grab as many things as they can on the way? People see life that way, that all that they have in this period of time is that experience of having however much food and and, and listening to as much music and doing as much drugs and having as much sex as possible because experience is the only thing that's real. They don't believe that there's something that transcends the five senses that we can perceive in this body. Jesus challenged that. He said, I am the life. Now, there's something more. All three of these truths are coming under fire today. And I think it's the gospel message that gives us something more. Now, when I was a Muslim, I had a hard time teasing out exactly what the gospel was because often Christians couldn't explain it to me in a succinct way that I could, that I could grasp and kind of chew over in my mind. And so as I was looking for the truth, looking for whether or not Christianity was the truth, I had to kind of distill the gospel for myself. What is it these Christians are saying? What is it that needs to be true in order for the Christian faith to be true? In other words, what's testable here? Because Jesus was a real man who came in history. There is a truth. Muslims understand that just as much as Christians do, that there is a truth. And for me, I said, what are those truths that we can test to see if Christianity is in fact the faith that ought to be followed? And I found it in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Here in this verse, Paul gives us a succinct message of what we ought to believe in order to have salvation. And it's three things, and I have them in bold for you here. That he is Lord. That his resurrection actually happened. That he was raised from the dead on the third day as the firstborn of the resurrection. And number three, that he died on the cross and and why he died on the cross for our sins so that we could be with him forever. So packed into these concepts are the idea of there being one God, Yahweh, and Jesus being that one God. Packed into this is the idea that we have sinned and that he needs to die on the cross for our sins in order for us to be free from the shackles of a destroyed image. But these three truths, I found, are something that are more than just asserted. They're actually historically grounded. Let's think about this for a second. If this man, Jesus, actually lived on this earth as a given, he either claimed to be God or he did not. That's something that would have happened in history. That's not a faith statement. That's a historical statement. This man claimed to be God. That he died on the cross. That is also a historical statement. That's not a faith statement. That's a historical statement. Did he die on the cross or not? And that he then rose from the dead. Historically speaking, it either happened or it didn't happen. So when I say this isn't a faith statement, what I'm saying is this isn't something that we just say totally unbased on the evidence itself. We're taking it on some other reason. No, this is something that's found in the historical evidence or at least could be found, theoretically speaking. Did this man rise from the dead? And to me, it was fascinating. Even as a Muslim, it was fascinating that his Christianity's truth was grounded in things that I could investigate. It was grounded in things that I could look into. This isn't like Buddhism or Hinduism, which is a worldview, a perspective that, yeah, it gives you a way to guide your life. It gives you a moral framework through which to live, but it's not testable in any sense. You can't test Hinduism or or Buddhism. It's a way to see things, but you can't test it. Christianity, you can test. And as Paul said, for example, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 17, if Jesus is not risen, our faith is in vain. 